Hello friends and welcome back to part two of our home economics series that we're doing. This series is meant to kind of let you come along with us while we learn and develop new skills or just kind of finely tune our existing skills in home economics and homemaking skills. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure that you're subscribed so that you can follow along with this series. In today's video, we are going to be doing a sewing project. We're going to be sewing a very simple elastic waist skirt for my little girl. I'm gonna do one and my mom's gonna do one. And then if we have time, we're also going to do some scrunchies. These are really simple. I have done this before, my mom has done this before. So it's very simple and we're gonna show you how we do it. So my mom brought over some fabric and then I also pulled out all of my extra fabric. A lot of this is extra old sheets and old pillowcases. There was a little bit of leftover fabric, like a few yards of leftover fabric from different projects, but we settled on using two vintage pillowcases. So the first thing that we did was we took a dress that Reese had. We went ahead and measured her waist and then we took a dress of hers to find the length. So we had her waist width measurement and then we had a dress that we got the length measurement from. So we kind of just laid the dress out on the fabric to get the approximate length. A couple of things to keep in mind when you get the waist measurement that is going to be the measurement for your elastic and when you get the length measurement you want to account for your hem so you're gonna to need to add just a little bit to your length because you're gonna to have to hem the bottom okay so what she's doing here is she's looking to see how much she needs to trim off of this fabric to make the skirt so we've already measured Reese's waist with the elastic. So she's going to take the elastic that she's already cut according to the measurement. Um, she's going to fold it in half like it would be if it were going all the way around the waistline of the skirt. So she folds it in half and lays it on top of the fabric. And then she's going to leave a few inches because on an elastic waist skirt, you need to have a gather on the elastic. So she leaves those few inches so that it has room to gather, but you don't need all of that fabric because that will be too much. She's, so she's just going to trim off the excess. The first cut was not entirely straight, so right here she's just trimming off a little bit to make the cut straighter. The cut is still not 100% perfect, but a lot of that will be fixed in the hem, so it'll be okay. Now it's time to iron the fabric and also iron down the hem. This is very important. Also, my mom double folded her hem, so she folded it once and ironed it down and then folded it over one more time and ironed it down. And this is so that once your hem has been sewn, that those edges won't fray and 
unravel your hem because it will do that is what she told me um so she double folded her hem and also make sure that you fold that hem down to the underside of your fabric not the side that you want to be the outside of the skirt Now I'm going to go ahead and start fixing up my fabric and my elastic for my skirt. This is going to basically repeat the process that my mom just did, only I can kind of use her fabric for a guide. So on a pillowcase, the edge where you stuff your pillow in the pillowcase, it's actually already hemmed. So I just left the hem on this pillowcase so I didn't have to hem the bottom of my skirt again. But I did lay the skirt on top of the fabric to get the length and then I used my mom's fabric that was already cut for the width. And in case this is confusing, I'm just cutting straight across this pillowcase. So this is two layers of fabric here that I'm cutting through. I'm afraid that might look confusing on camera, especially when I go to get the width because my mom's piece is folded. Um, but this piece that I'm working with is, a, is just a cut straight across the pillowcase. So it's two layers of fabric. So I'm just going to trim up the edge so that I have the same width as her and you'll see in a second what I'm talking about, but that's why, I, I just don't want that to be confusing, but I just cut straight across the pillowcase because I was gonna utilize that bottom hem. Now because I do not have to hem the bottom of my skirt, I am folding it inside out. So the underside is what you see on top here. That's what I'm ironing. I'm ironing it folded because I'm gonna go ahead and sew up that back seam. My mom is gonna go ahead and sew her bottom hem first before she sews up her back seam. Now I'm going to give you a little pep talk here while you watch these next few clips because you can lose your religion really quickly over a sewing project because as simple of, of a sewing project as this was, my machine decided to start acting up on me and I have never ever had problems out of this machine and it started acting up on me this day and then I also made a really dumb mistake and had to take out some seams. So. <laughs> Sewing projects, especially when you are beginner level like I am, can be very frustrating. So just hang in there, trust the process, and know that it's a learning experience. What actually was happening here was my thread got really knotted, and then we also figured out that my bobbin was really low, and maybe that's why my thread was getting knotted. So I got really frustrated. So my mom stepped in to kind of Rethread my bobbin, rethread my needle. I know how, but I was really at my peak of frustration right here. And so she stepped in to try to help me out so that I could take a few minutes to relax my nerves for a few minutes. And we got the machine back, back running again, and I was able to sew my back seam.
All right, so now that I have the inside seam done and I didn't have to hem the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and fold over my section to put my elastic. Now here I've got the skirt is still inside out. Um, that's very important. <laughs> I've still got it inside out. And this section has to be wide enough that you can fit the elastic and also sew along the edge. Now, the mistake that I made was I should have double folded this like my mom double folded her bottom hem. She told me to also double fold the part where you put the elastic in so that you don't have an exposed edge that can fray and unravel your hem. I forgot to do this. I am not an expert seamstress. I am a novice beginner sewer. <laughs> so I, I forgot this and I wish that I hadn't because I can already tell that the fabric is starting to fray. Um, so make sure that you do the same thing that she did with her bottom hem. You're going to fold it under once and then fold it under again. But anyways, I did not do that, um, but I'm going to sew right along the edge and you want to sew all the way around, but leave like a I would say three to four inch or maybe even two inches you want to leave some space you want to leave some space open so that you can feed your elastic through the waistband you don't want to sew it all the way around and sew it shut so sew from your beginning go all the way around and then stop about three or four inches before you get to your seam again so don't it's going to be like a tube that you're going to feed your elastic into Right here, my mom is already done with her bottom hem and she's gonna go ahead and add some trim. And I'm gonna add my trim as well. We wanted to add the trim before we fed our elastic through. So I've still got the skirt inside out and I'm going to go ahead and pin my trim all along the bottom and then cut it at the side where I'm going to overlap it. All right, so the skirt is still inside out and you're just going to sew and follow your pins and sew all the way around the edge. Just try to keep it as um, straight as you can. If you did do a bottom hem, then you wanna kind of follow the seam line from your bottom hem. I didn't have a bottom hem, so I didn't have to worry about that. But if you did hem the bottom, then you wanna try to keep this seam the same with your bottom hem seam so that it doesn't look funky on the outside of the skirt. I just overlapped the part where there was the cut piece and just kind of tried to do that the best that I could. It was a lot of fabric to put through the needle, um, but I kind of just backed over it, went backwards and forwards just to make sure it was secure. Now it's time to feed my elastic through the tube that I made for the waist. Um, the easiest way to do this is to attach a big safety pin to the end of your elastic. That's the easiest, quickest way to be able to feed it through the waistband. If you don't do this, it will take you literally forever. It's still really annoying and really tedious, but it's so much easier with the safety pin on the end. But you just wanna feed it all the way through. So feed it in one end of your opening go all the way through the waistband and then come out the other side of your open opening when you sewed your waistband you should have left that two or three to four inch space 
and you are going to have a place to feed it into the waistband go all the way around and then it'll come out the other side then you'll have to sew your elastic together and then you'll have to sew up the opening So once you get it all the way through and you've got both ends of the elastic at your opening, you can go ahead and take your safety pin off. And my elastic was a little bit thinner than I thought it would be, so I ended up having to kind of overlap it when I sewed it. I think I actually trimmed just a little bit off because I wanted the waist to be tight enough and it just didn't seem like it was quite tight enough for her. So we kind of used my mom's as a guide and I overlapped my elastic a little bit and I think I even trimmed a little bit of the excess off and I'm so sorry that I don't have an up close shot of that I thought that I took an up close shot of where we fed the elastic through but apparently I did not and I apologize for that you can kind of see it here that we've got both ends and we're just gonna overlap those and sew them and when we sew them we're gonna sew over them a couple of times like go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards just to make sure that it's really tight. Now that the elastic has been sewed together, I'm going to just follow my original waistband seam and just sew up that opening that I left so that it's everything's closed, the elastic is now in the waistband, and it will gather at the waist so that it's a full skirt. So this is the result. This is what my skirt looked like when I was done. Really, really cute. You would never know this was made out of a pillowcase. Um, and then this was my mom's. They're both very, very similar, almost identical in style. We both put that really cute lace scalloped trim on the bottom. And they're just so cute. So cute with a onesie. Now here you can see how clean my mom's inside 
um, waistband seam is so much cleaner than mine I thought I showed you mine but apparently I did not but nevertheless mine was not near as pretty um, and I tried this skirt on my little girl and it just looks so cute on her it's a little bit long but she'll be able to wear this for a while I feel like they both fit her so well she's already worn both of them out and they're just so darling a couple of tips that I suggest if you are brand new to sewing and you have never sewed on a sewing machine before ever, I would suggest that whatever sewing machine you have, you look at the manual thoroughly, you look at some videos on using it, do some test um, seams on some scrap fabric and test out different things, make sure that your tension is correct, look up how to thread the bobbin and thread the needle and that kind of thing. I am no expert at all I do want to learn more and more about sewing but I am no expert and this video was not meant to teach you how to sew exactly it was specifically tailored to sewing a skirt um, but if you are brand new to sewing I would suggest you get to know your machine really really well before you start a project because it will help you when you do do a project for it to go so much smoother so I hope that this um, was helpful to you. I hope that maybe it inspired you to use up some of your old pillowcases and make some skirts for your little girls. Um, I hope that this was a good tutorial for you. I know it could have been better. I'm still working on perfecting these videos, but I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful to you and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Make sure that you go back and watch part one of our home economics series and please subscribe for more. I hope y'all have a great week. Bye.